We're still in Matthew's gospel. Last week, we saw Jesus walking on water and getting into the boat, heading to the other side of uh, Genesaret, the, the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. And uh, today, we find him on that other side, but heading north. And he, he and he heads up to uh, Tyre and Sidon. Those are uh, two towns, uh, just to give you a perspective. Sidon and, and uh, Tyre are on the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea, and uh, Sidon is approximately 25 miles south of Beirut. They were in what we know as Lebanon. Um, and our hearts go out to all those folks in Beirut. The terrible explosion that took place there recently um, in a warehouse uh, with fertilizer sitting in it for years and somehow maybe through a fire or something it exploded and the uh, the explosion was just it was probably one of the worst in all of history for something like that um, there were at least 220 people that were killed uh, 5,000 or more were um, injured and over 300,000 people or so are now homeless in that area. So please extend your prayers and consideration for charity upon them as well. Um, but we see this, this location today <clears throat> um, in the, the, where the Phoenicians are, and, the, the, uh, and the, so this Canaanite woman comes from this area. And what's interesting about it is this is the only time in the gospel stories that Jesus has actually left uh, the territory of Jerusalem. Uh, so he's, uh, well, um, so let's, let's look, look at this uh, for a moment. This is a non-Jewish territory that Jesus first steps into. And as soon as he's there, a Gentile, a Canaanite woman, comes rushing up to him. So if Jesus thought he was going to get any rest by leaving the areas where the Israelites were, because they typically wouldn't travel to where the Gentiles are. Uh, he wa it wasn't happening. There's uh, someone who, who absolutely heard about him, <clears throat> comes rushing up to him and asks for his help for her daughter. She's asking Jesus to heal because he had such a reputation of doing that, uh, her daughter. Now, if you read this story out of context, you might think for a moment that Jesus was was being aloof uh, in his response to this Canaanite woman. Because when she first came and, and was shouting to him, he just ignored her. He didn't answer her back. He just kept on doing what he was doing and, and didn't even, didn't even uh, acknowledge her. And, but she made enough noise that the other apostles said, look, let's just, you know, take care. Let's just get rid of her. We got to get rid of her. Take care of this and get rid of her. She's a nuisance. Obviously, she's a nuisance. You know, so she's got to go. Just take care of it. And uh, he, he didn't do that. He waited, and again, she came up, up to him and, and asked, and he looked at her, and he said, I'm, I'm here for the children of Israel. I'm, I'm not here, you know, for anyone else. I'm here for the children of Israel. And he says, in, the, in this statement, he says, it's not right to take the food away from children, and throw it to the dogs. If you, in reading this, in, in my 21st century Americanized brain, I would, I would think like, wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty cruel. But it was actually a bit of sarcasm that Jesus was using. Because you have to look at the word dogs for a moment. Because when you think about taking the children's food and throwing it to the dogs, you think of the wild dogs that are running on the streets. You think, wow, you know, it's just uh, Jesus is, is being a little bit mean. But no, no, it was actually some, some, uh, some cutting edge, sarcastic humor. Because the word that he uses for dogs is kunaria. And kunaria means like little cutesy little doggies that people have in their households. So it's like Jesus is saying, you know, you, you, you wouldn't take the kids' food and then throw it to all the cute little dogs instead. And uh, so he was speaking like, you know, you, you remind me of like a cute little puppy in a household in a sense. Now this woman 
was really amazing because she matched wits with Jesus in that moment because she said, hey, you know, even the Kunaria will we'll eat, you know, we'll look and eat the scraps that have fallen from the table. So she's saying, you know, okay, but I'm still here. There's got to be maybe a little leftover something for me, huh? What do you say? And Jesus loved that. And in, in, in that moment, he just said, oh, my goodness, what, what amazing faith you have. And it will be rewarded. And in that moment, he healed her daughter. She was healed. What great faith, Jesus responds, to the first person outside of the Israel territory of the Jewish people, the Jewish territory, where the Gentiles were, outside of there, the first person that comes to him receives this miracle and this beautiful healing because of their faith. So this in of itself is a prelude of things to come because when when Jesus commissions his apostolic group, they, they meet him up in Galilee, but they spread, they spread the word. And the faith begins to spread. And now we see that Jesus isn't just for, even though he said, I came for the, the, the lost children of Israel, he wasn't just for them. That was just the beginning. So we just see this foreshadowing of what's going to take place in, in history, and here we are today. So there's a couple of things here. One is faith, and the other is persistence, which were the two qualities that this woman had. And it's this wonderful persistence in the faith which will turn the head of God toward us more so. Because if we just say, hey, God, can you please, you know, just help me with this, will you? And then don't follow up with it and just leave it as such. Who's to say what kind of faith that is? But if we're relentless in our faith and persistent in our faith, then we're setting ourselves up for a possible miraculous event in our own lives. Now, I don't know which ones God uh, are going to produce or not produce, that's entirely up to him. But I do know from the word of God that my faith must be a persistent faith. You know, there's a saying in the church, the squeaky wheel gets the holy oil. <laughs> and absolutely, this woman was anointed in Jesus that day when he just spoke his word to her. God's grace was upon her and it shone wonderfully through the healing of her daughter. My hope for all of you that are out there is that through this pandemic, as we continue to pray, that we are relentless as this Canaanite woman was. We're relentless in our prayers for one another. We don't give up, we don't stop. We keep our faith through and through, no matter how long this takes. Because within all of this is a test of our faith. Because like, how much time are you gonna give God? Now God could easily come back and say, well, you haven't been very cooperative. <laughs> I mean, I don't just mean logistically, even though I'm including it, but we might not have been very cooperative in our faith to begin with. I know that there are a lot of people who are finding faith through this, and that is miraculous in of itself and wonderful. But what I'm saying is if you don't see the results that you expect from your faith, if you don't receive something just quite as equal as we see these healings here, don't let that deter you from your faith. Because ultimately in the lives of this woman and her daughter, something happened later on. They didn't live forever. Who knows what other, what other ailments may have come. And that's how I treat all healings. They're just a reprieve. Healings are reprieves because we're still mortal in this sense. 
There will come a day where no more healings will be required because the permanency of God's healing will have taken place in our physicalness in the resurrection. And the healing of our souls, though, which is what faith produces in this sense, the healing of our souls is an ongoing process. It began with the blood of the cross, and it continues through our own pursuit of Jesus in our lives today. So let your faith increase. Let God wants to do that for you. All you have to do is say, okay. And then don't stop after that. Don't stop. In Christ's name, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.